So Congressman Bill Pascrell wants to see Donald Trump's tax returns. So do I. Check it out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. I do want to cut away from that for just a moment, though. First, uh, Representative Bill Pascrell Jr. is on the line with us. He, he's a, a member of the United States House of Representatives, represents the 9th District of New Jersey. He is the chair of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Oversight. His website, Pascrell, P-A-S-C-R-E-L-L.house.gov. You can tweet him, at Bill Pascrell. Um, is on the line with us, and uh, they're, this, he's part of the group that's looking into Trump's tax returns, if I have this right. Representative Pascrell, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, what, what is the consequence in your mind, or how consequential was this Supreme Court decision yesterday saying that, uh, yes, in fact, uh, the tax returns of Donald Trump and all the, all the associated uh, uh, bookkeeping and things that go along with it, including communications, um, can be turned over to Cyrus Vance, the, the district attorney of New York. And how is that going to affect you guys and the work you're doing? Well, it's interesting. There are a number of cases, Tom, and hello, and thanks for having me on. There are a number oh, my of pleasure. cases. I've been on this, I've been on this for uh, years. Uh, some might say I'm a slow learner. <laughs> but when I get my hands on something and I believe in it, I'm going to stick with it. And, you, and, you, and you're going to face, face victories and you're going to face defeats while you're after the truth. And I stayed with this through 19 resolutions on the House floor and on the floor when we had our Ways and Means committees many times. And those resolutions all pointed to transparency. Uh, we've had the, the president since Nixon provide for us their tax returns. Uh, very few problems uh, since that turn. Since, since Nixon put up a barrier, and since Nixon, uh, remember, said, uh, you know, the government <laughs> has the right to know if the president's a crook. Well, thank you, but we have a right to know because we want to avoid conflicts of interest. We want to avoid different situations that have occurred because of one's private life, one's business life. We're not out to simply peek behind the covers here. Because that's not our objective, and I could speak for myself. That certainly wasn't my objective. When I started this out, Tom, four years, five years ago now, on November the 19th, uh, 2017, when I started out with this hearing, having those hearings through the uh, Ways and Means Committee, I went first to the chairman at the time. The Republicans were in the majority, uh, Kevin Brady of Texas and asked him, let's do this together so I can't be accused of and Democrats can't be accused of trying to make this a partisan issue. Your guy said he was going to give us these and he said he had an audit and he couldn't give us these and that audit is still going on, Tom. So it's really BS when you look at it objectively. And I think mm -hmm. that's what the government needs more of, transparency. That's what we need. So we know who our public officials are, and we know if they're scheming in private to make to enrich themselves. And that's what much of what his four years was about, uh, Trump enriching himself and his family and his corporation. So well, he bragged about that during that the primaries. Excuse me. Right. He, yeah, he said, I'll, yeah, I'll probably be the first person to ever run for president and make a profit doing it. <laughs> and he meant it. He meant it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no two ways about it. And now the Supreme Court has ruled, we've waited for a long time, that the case in New York, and, and by the way, Tom, as an aside, on February the 19th, 2017, the famous year of the hoax of tax cuts and spreading them around to everybody, which was a joke, talk about hoaxes president and he used that word more than anybody i ever known and it was the biggest hoax we've ever seen and they were town that turned out of office remember 2018 we need tax fairness we need people to pay what's what really they should be paying depending upon their assets and their income and we got to know for our president if he doesn't have any secret deals with other foreign countries and companies in foreign companies in foreign countries. And we have every right to know that. 
And there is a law in the tax code, 6103A, A to S. There is a law that states very specifically that there are three committees in the Congress that can ask for these tax cuts, not only from the president, but from anybody in the executive branch of government, going back to the Tea Party incident, which happened in 20, uh, 20, 2024, uh, which was uh, uh, 1924, I'm sorry, 1924, which said that there are these three committees that can ask for the uh, members of the executive branch of government uh, for a reason, and then they can vote together if they give that, they get that permission to get the taxes to make them public. That's another That step. was because of the Teapot Dome scandal back in the day. Yeah, that's what came out of that Teapot Dome scandal when Secretary Fall, who was Secretary of the Interior at the time, was making his own private deals with public lands in Wyoming. Yep. And he was caught. You know, were Democrats were involved and Republicans were involved. They were going to have a party, I guess, on, these, on the oil reserves on, in naval uh, territory, the United States Navy. That's that was probably the biggest scandal in the history of the country. This will be even bigger. I, I made that prediction many many moons ago. So yeah, I think you're right. This was in New York. I said on that day that we're going after the tax returns that the states have a probably a quicker chance or a better chance to get the taxes because they have they're not under federal rules, the courts themselves, and what their laws are as long as they're not in conflict necessarily with federal law, that they can get yeah. these things even quicker. So that's well, what President they, Pascal, they didn't, uh, Forgive the interruption, but we're going to hit a hard break here in about a minute and a half. Um, you are the chair of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Oversight. Are, are you going to, is yes, your sir. committee going to be one of the committees that's going to be looking into Trump's tax returns? And, 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 and how, how is Congress going to deal with this? Well, that's interesting. Richie Neal, the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Tommy, he brought this uh, case during the election of last year in behalf of the Ways and Means Committee, because we're one of the committees, one of the three committees that have the right under 6103 to go after anybody in the executive branch of government's taxes, because we feel there may be something really to look at for the public good and, and to increase the possibilities of transparency. So Richie's uh, waiting, and I talk to him all the time as my chairman, and uh, many have criticized him for going slow on this, and I think he's been very methodical and has done the right thing. And I've been the big mouth about it, but, I mean, Richie has been right on methodically as our chairman. And, I, you know, he's waiting for the courts uh, to decide whether or not uh, certain obstacles that have been put in the way by Mr. Trump are going to be set aside because they're meaningless and frivolous. So I'm waiting for our case to come forward, too. But I said that the states were going to have a good chance, and here they are. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, in fact, that, I mean, it's coming out of New York. Representative Bill Pascrell, Jr., the congressman representing the 9th District of New Jersey, chair of the House Ways and Means Subcommittee on Oversight, pascrell.house.gov, Twitter, at Bill Pascrell. Representative Pascrell, thanks so much for dropping by today, and good luck with your work.